Welcome to The Hidden Truth. We're still pretty new to YouTube and we're looking to expand our channel. If you enjoy our videos, please consider sharing them on social media or other UFO communities. Your support means everything to us. We have an exciting announcement. We'll be doing a monthly giveaway. All you have to do is like and comment on our videos for the chance to win a variety of prizes, including hats, shirts, and more. The more you like and comment, the greater your chances. Oh, and subscribing doesn't hurt either. What are you waiting for? Smash that like button. You can get free stuff. Don't forget to sign up for our Patreon page. Members get early access to videos, ad-free, and you can see content you can't see anywhere else. This is one of the best documented UFO cases ever, and it happened in the skies above Alaska. Three UFOs played tag with Japan Airlines Cargo Flight 1628 for 50 minutes while they were visually observed by a sometimes terrified flight crew. During the last 30 minutes, the UFOs were tracked on military and civilian radar, and the entire encounter was verified by a high-level administrator of the Federal Aviation Administration. The incident received media coverage all over the world. Here's what happened. Japan Airlines Captain Kenju Tarachi was an ex-fighter pilot and senior airline pilot with more than 10,000 hours of flight experience. He was assigned to fly a Japan Airlines cargo flight from Paris to Reykjavik, Anchorage, and on to Tokyo. On November 17, 1986, at about 5.09 p.m. Alaska time, the Anchorage Air Route Traffic Control Center contacted JAL-1628, which at that time was about 104 miles northeast of Fort Yukon. The flight controller asked the pilot to adjust his heading so the plane would pass south of Fort Yukon and Fairbanks. The co-pilot turned the plane to the left about 15 degrees. Captain Tarachi, sitting on the left side of the cockpit, saw unidentified lights out his side window to the left and below. He thought they were military planes and ignored them. After a few minutes, he realized that these unidentified aircraft were pacing him. Flight 1628 contacted the Anchorage Center twice in rapid succession and asked if there were any other aircraft in the area. The Anchorage Center responded that there was no military aircraft and ground radar did not show any aircraft other than Flight 1628. Then the two lights began to move erratically. Tarachi recollected in his official report to the FAA. The distance from the lights was far enough from us and we felt no immediate danger. I thought perhaps it was a UFO. The lights were still moving strangely. Most unexpectedly, two spaceships appeared directly in front of the plane, shooting off lights. The inside cockpit shined brightly and I felt the warmth of the UFO's thrusters on my face. Then, three to seven seconds later, the fire, like from jet engines, stopped and became a small circle of lights as they began to fly in level flight at the same speed as we were. The middle of the body of the ship sparked an occasional stream of lights, like a charcoal fire. Its shape was a square, flying 500 feet to 1,000 feet in front of us, slightly higher in altitude. Its size was about the same size as the body of a DC-8, similar in size to a Boeing 707. It is impossible for any man-made machine to make a sudden appearance in front of a jumbo jet that is flying 910 kilometers per hour and to move along in a formation paralleling our aircraft, but we did not feel threatened. Honestly, we were simply astounded. I have no idea why they came so close to us. There was a pale white flat light in the direction where the ships flew away, pacing us. The Anchorage Center replied that they saw nothing on their radar. I set our digital weather radar distance to 20 miles, radar angle to the horizon. There it was, on the screen. A large, green, round object that appeared 7 or 8 miles away, in the direction of the object. We arrived at the sky above the Isleson Air Force Base in Fairbanks. It was a clear night. We were just above the bright city lights, and we checked the pale white light behind us. There was a silhouette of a gigantic spaceship. We must get away quickly. A terrified Captain Tarachi, in coordination with the Anchorage Center, attempted evasive maneuvers such as flying in a circle and changing altitude. The gigantic UFO, later described by Tarachi as the size of two aircraft carriers, shadowed Flight 1628 through all maneuvers. Tarachi wondered and feared as to their purpose. Anchorage Center offered to scramble a military jet, but Captain Tarachi declined the offer, fearing unintended consequences of a military confrontation with the UFO. About that time, a United Airlines passenger jet flew into the same air zone and was requested by the ATC to get a visual of the situation. 
Tarachi reported, When the United plane came by our side, the spaceship suddenly disappeared. The strange encounter ended 150 miles away from Anchorage. In 1986, John Callahan was FAA Division Chief of the Accidents and Investigations Branch in Washington, D.C. About a week after the JAL-1628 incident, he got an urgent call from Alaska. Callahan's recollections were recorded. His comments, too, are edited for clarity. I forgot who it was that called, but he said, We got a problem here. I don't know what to tell the media. The whole FAA office is full of the media from Alaska. Callahan asks, What's the problem? He says, It's that UFO. I said, What UFO? He says, Well, last week, we had a UFO chase a 747 across the skies, up here for about 30 minutes or so. I told him to get all that data together. I wanted all the civilian and military disks that they had, and all the tapes they had available, and flown overnight to the tech center where I'm sitting. The military refused to send their tapes, but he got everything Anchorage Traffic Control had. We told him that we wanted this room set up to be just like it was in Anchorage, and we wanted all that data to come to this scope, and we wanted to see everything the controller has seen. We want to hear everything he heard, and we wanted it all tied together. The radar, the digital radar, and the sound. When Callahan played the tapes, he heard a three-way conversation between Anchorage Air Traffic Control, Elmendorf Snowrad Regional Operations Control Center, and Captain Tarachi of JAL-1628. Anchorage Air Traffic Control didn't see the UFOs on their radar. Based on their conversation, the military was clearly tracking the UFOs. Callahan explained, the military controller has what they call height-finding radar, and they have long-range radar and short-range radar, so if they don't catch it on one of their systems, they catch it on the other. Ours wouldn't record it. Details reported by the military controller indicated that the UFOs were traveling thousands of miles per hour as they maneuvered in the airspace around the 747. The military controller had one other surprise finding. Near the end of the incident, a United Airlines flight was diverted to observe the JAL flight. By then, Captain Tarachi no longer saw the huge UFO, and the United pilot did not see it either. Unbeknownst to both of them, the military radar clearly indicated that the UFO had tucked out of sight behind the United flight and had begun following it. After sitting through the presentation, Callahan's boss turned to him and said, Don't talk to anybody until I give you the okay. The next day his boss set up a briefing. According to Callahan, I brought all the people from the tech center. We went upstairs. We had all kinds of boxes and data that we handed them. Printouts. It filled up the room. They brought in three people from the FBI, three people from the CIA, and three people from Reagan's scientific study team. And I don't know who the rest of these people were, but they were all excited. Callahan and his staff showed the assemblage of everything they had and answered a lot of technical questions. When they got done, they actually swore all these other guys into, this never took place. We never had this meeting and this was never recorded. This was one of the guys from the CIA. I asked them at the time, I don't know why you're saying this. If there was something there, and if it's not the stealth bomber, then you know it's a UFO. And if it's a UFO, why wouldn't you want the people to know? He said if they come out and told the American public that they ran into a UFO out there, it would cause a panic across the country. So therefore, we can't talk about it. And we're taking all this data. But Callahan had copies of everything in his office. When they asked me what I thought, I told them that it looked like we had a UFO that was up there. As far as I was concerned, the guys from Reagan's science team were the ones that verified my own thoughts about it. They were very, very excited about the data. They had said at that time that this was the only time, and they had used the words a UFO, was ever recorded on the radar for any length of time. John Callahan retired from the FAA, became an industry consultant, and periodically recounted the true story of JAL Flight 1628. This is a well-documented case. I only included it because I think it is an excellent case and some people might not be aware of it. Source: AnchoragePress.com